Do you know the reasonings why Penguin is opening up the vault that is usually enforced on Consulate? If you're stuck in a rank and you don't know what you can do to improve, then you most likely were given a bad advice without realizing it, or you are applying the advice in the wrong situations. This bad advice can be pretty hard to figure it out yourself, especially if you're a newer player because they often come from trustworthy content creators or end streamers. I'm not going to give the names here, but I will be using sometimes their in-game examples of their advice. And if you know who is it about, keep it to yourself please, because this video is not made to bash out other creators, but to give you the reasons why to always double check anything that content creators, including myself, tell you to do. Let's start with the common advice of just playing more. The answer is usually for the question on how to get better or on how to get to a specific rank. Just paying more is possibly the worst answer you can give in this situation. With the advice of just playing more, you will build extremely bad habits, which eventually will make you stuck in a rank. And you will not know how to get past it. I would dare to say that even some diamonds or champions don't know how to play the game properly. There are thousands of examples of major setup mistakes on high platilo on Twitter. Some people even manage to get into CL without having rotation between the sides and the other stuff. Luckily for them and sadly for you, they rely mainly on the gun skills, but the technical stuff is what they lack. The rotation between sides, a reinforcement or a hole towards a room should help you to get an easier win. Or easier kill. You still can kill the attacker without the rotation or the angle, or a safe spot but you will make your life a lot harder by putting yourself at a disadvantage. This also answers the question of, do you get better of just playing the game? Of course, yes, but instead of getting to a certain point in 2 months, you will get there maybe in 5 to 6. This is all coming from someone that coached tons of new but as well as more experienced players. There's a reason why there are people that play the game for a long time still stuck in the lower ranks. I genuinely believe that most people can get to Platinum 3, who take this game just a little bit more serious. The advice of just playing more should be, just play more and analyze your plays, wins and losses. If they ask a too general question. How to analyze your games is also a pretty broad question, so not to get too much into this, find the reasons why in the analysis. Advice of just playing more is fine, but not the best when it comes to the questions such as on how to get better at killing people, because killing people is dependent on your mechanical skills, but also on how to position yourself to get on an advantageous position. Sometimes you can use utility elsewhere, sometimes to pick more or less aggressive and much more. You can always take the 40 to 60 or 50-50 gunfights, but you can also make most gunfights 70-30. So, the advice of just playing more is just fine advice for this situation. Next hot advice is don't solo queue. Solo queue is a great way to become independent of your stack. Solo queue has a lot of benefits. One of them is getting mechanically better because you won't be able to rely on your teammates to feed you intel to get the kills. If you rely too much on them, you will just drop down the rank so you will learn how to be your own man, which is a crucial requirement to play in a team. No one wants to babysit you, no, no one wants someone that cannot hit a stationary target. Solo queue helps you with that. Solo queue also helps you to get out of your comfort zone more often than when you're playing in a team. Solo queuing is especially needed for those that play support anchors in their stacks, where they do not enter in the gunfights as often. In solo queue, no one will be droning for you most of the time, or no one will be on the cameras when you're roaming. You're put on your own, and it's only on you if you will get the kill or not. This is super important skill to have in the team. There will be tons of situations where most of your team is occupied with something else. On some maps, in coordinated teams, the attack team is usually split in two parts, and then they work separately but still together. And here shines that solo queue still. You should on solo queue only and only if you play this game just for the rank. Solo queuing is harder, therefore if you play C just for the rank, then stay away from it. Otherwise, go solo queue. 
Again, there is a reason why most, if not all, pro players have a smurf account that they only solo queue. Oh, and it's possible to solo queue to the diamond, as I did it myself. I haven't tried solo queuing to champion, but I believe it is possible. Join up my Discord server if you need a team, want to play 10 mans, talk about ease for siege with tier 1 coaches, analysts, and much more. Speaking about pros, let's take a look at the Delta Project's clip. We have drone count to 3, yeah? Yep. He's already in library, he's black, guys. Yeah, you guys library. let him in! Yeah, <laughs> Oh, you're you? not even a catwalk! I just asked you! Guys, we're all on site here. They're all banging me through library. I, I called. They're opening all through library. And we'll bang it through. Then pushing over the top of the top of the top of the top. The clip showcased a default strat that didn't work because the main thing didn't exist. Chemistry behind the teammates. A lot of people will tell you not to copy pros, which is just wrong. Copy their strats. Copy how pros play. But I will tell you one thing. A strat is not just where to put a shield or a reinforcement. It's how to play around the utility as shown in the clip. If you don't understand the position, or if you don't see the reasons behind the barbed wire or anything, you won't know how to play in a specific situation, and that will make you think how you shouldn't be playing the pro strats. Wherein, it's just your fault for forcing something that you don't know how to play. This is very similar as thinking how not to play Maverick because you just can't Maverick trick. This is very important. Just because pros did something, to replicate it, understand their code process behind it. The moment you understand on how and why pros play in a specific situation, you will know if you should implement that in your team. Again, this is speaking from my own experience when I was stacking up with my team. I got 5250 MMR within just 46 ranked matches back in the time when I didn't go to uni. We have a few more, and the next one advice is on saving your drone outside of the building during the preparation phase. I agree on how you shouldn't be going instantly to the objective, scanning everyone and making noise, but as a team, you generally should have at least two drones inside of the building during the preparation phase. Take the preparation phase as the extra 45 seconds of the action phase, use it. With just two drones or even one, you can deny the whole floor of basement on chalet when attacking any non-basement objective. There are tons of easy parkours to put your drone in the building during the prep phase. Sound intel is nearly as good as visual intel, so having a drone like this gives you intel on both staircases, on cafe, when attacking double kitchen. Some other good prep place drones can be found in the top right video, and they are really necessary for any established team as well as Oxygen will do with the three drones on Villa. The first three drones that you will see is to isolate the main stairs on the first floor roamers. With these set of drones, attackers can immediately get the areas and apply pressure onto the main stairs, with no risk of roamers. Videos that are giving you the best attachments are actually giving you the best time waste you can ever get. The only videos about best attachments are the videos that talk about what the attachments are doing. There is no best attachment for a gun, otherwise it will be known by year 6. The same thing goes for the best sensitivity, as for ratio and FOV. These videos, for some reasons, have so many views, and yet are more damaging than giving you an advantage. Test attachments yourself every season, that takes up to 10 minutes for your mains. Also, best aim practice, best way to gain sense, is not a thing. There are ways to get your sense, and there are ways to practice your aiming skills, but just because it works for Shaiko or Bolo, it doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. So giving a shot to these videos is only to test if you're a fan of the routine, otherwise don't force yourself a specific practice routine. I had seen so many people forced into go only DMRs or single fire just because. Let's talk about one more thing, and then I will try to show you how to spot bad advices, or at least some of them. There will always be circling around some solo queue 100% work setups, and for example it might be familiar to you. But don't say why in the comment section because it's not the point of the video to shame anyone here. There was, and still a lot of people in the solo queue playing the villa's closer with smoke, mute, or generally shotgun. But smoke was always the choice due to the canisters. Not only that you're locking yourself into a closet, but your team will lose one of the most crucial operators in the late round. The closet hold on Villa 
can only work with a player in the bathroom, and that's bare minimum. What's more funny is in the solo queue, you want to have options. Which options do you have in the closet? Hope not to get flashed and fragged out? I believe it was in the same video, how they have opened up the middle extra vault for the sake to deny the statue playing with the smoke. What you're doing right now is allowing anyone on the extra window repel to fully deny the trophy. This is kind of advice that sounds good on paper because you have extra ability to deny the plant, but actually gives you more harm unless you know exactly what the opponents are doing, or in this case, that they won't be repelling on the extra window. Then we had more recently a cafe top floor hall with someone in the shop. Again, with a shotgun, preferably so you can kill anyone that drops the red hatch. If I remember correctly, it was Zella's shotgun, and I'm mentioning this because when your hold fails, when you fall off, you really don't have anywhere to play with her shotgun anymore, and especially not in solo queue. The reason why I heavily dislike this hold, and I believe it will hurt you more, is because it can be denied from repelling outside Piano's window. Usually what you will see is Pearl's playing by the side of the shop, and not around bar or the hatch. And they will have additional players contesting piano windows. So not only you will be stuck the moment piano window gets open, since someone will be on the skylight most likely, you cannot rely on your teammate to do the other work. You might tell me how this might work in the lower ranks, and that's totally fine. If it works, it's alright, but you need to understand how bad this strat is. Your strat cannot be based on the attackers or defenders not doing the basic thing, but your play is based on what enemies are currently doing or will do based on the previous intel. Then there was a clubhouse ying attack with the hope that no one is in the construction or bedroom side, which there usually is someone, and hoping that there is no barbed wire or malusis trap or someone on the top red facing construction. Also you should use hard bridge for this strat if outside con was reinforced which was another funny thing to hear. Here are the positions of the defenders in the early stages, as well as a bit of utility. Full utility can be found on my Patreon page. But chaos, not everyone plays like a pro. This isn't a pro league strat, this is a default rank strat that anyone in the plat free lobbies will most likely follow, or at least the most of it. So yeah, good luck beating these all with free candelas that can also be shut down. There was one grill extra that was based on smoking yourself in a plant. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that here. But with these four examples, I just wanted to show you how some advice might sound good on paper, and they might actually be good situationally, but generally you will lose more. Also, getting coached helps, and if anyone wants to get better in Siege quicker, getting the help of a coach or a friend that is trustworthy is definitely going to boost you up. Again, it's up to you if you want to be learning Siege for 2-3 to three months or a year or so. It's not a must to have coach, it's just not as useless as some people might think, especially not as useless for the newer people. About coaches, there's plenty of wannabe coaches around there, so keep that in mind. And that's probably the biggest issue of some people thinking the coaches are useless just because they hit the useless ones. How to find bad advice? It's not as easy. The easiest way to find bad advice is advice without an argument. If someone tells you to reinforce a wall, for example, with no reasonings. Or if a coach tells you that you should do X without reasonings, that's also bad advice. They most likely don't know what they are saying. If someone tells you to do X, Y, Z because a pro player does it, that's also a bad advice. Anything that we say must have a good argument behind it. But to find a bad advice in an advice that you were given the reasonings, it becomes a lot of harder, because it's very unlikely that you will be able to figure it out on your own if the argument for doing that advice is valid, situational, or just wrong. And the last thing is for anyone that is trying to give an advice. It's okay not to know the answer, and it's okay to say, I'm not sure. It's better to say that than risking giving a bad advice.